Tom Perry is in Cairo. So, Tom, you and Osama were the only Canadian news crew at that Rafa border uh, with Gaza. And I'm curious, what struck you about the look and the feel of it right now? You know, it was not just the look and the feel of the place. It was approaching it. It was just getting there. You know, Osama and I, we were on this Egyptian government-run excursion that took foreign journalists from Cairo on a very long bus ride across Egypt to the North Sinai uh, to uh, the Rafa crossing. And so we drove through the desert. We drove through little towns. And as you get closer to the Rafa crossing, you are in the North Sinai, where a lot of history has happened. And you see the increased military presence. The Egyptian military just has, I don't even know how many tanks uh, parked as you get closer to uh, the, the, the Rafa crossing, just showing that that beefed up military presence uh, in that region. So, you know, you know, you've been to places where you think, well, something big is, is, is happening here. And you certainly get that sense as you approach uh, the crossing. As you get closer to the crossing, I think I described it to someone as being a sense of controlled chaos. And you realize the weight of what's happening there. You realize, you know, just how many people are stuck behind it and how many people want to get out so badly. And, and so you can't help be, I don't know, impressed by that. You can't help be that leaving an impression on you as you're standing there and you're realizing you're at really what is right now a, a very a focal point in certainly in modern history. And, you know, there, there are so many efforts to try to get people across that border to get Canadians out of Gaza into Egypt. I know you've been talking uh, to some of those people, to some of their families who are stuck. What are they telling you? Yeah, it, it's, it's obviously frustrating. Um, they're scared, right? And, uh, you know, we, we've been talking to people really since this crisis began. I've been in contact with a couple of folks just, you know, primarily, I'll be honest with you, primarily with their families here, just because it's so hard to contact people in, in Gaza sometimes, that have been dealing a lot with family members. And they just talk about how worried they are and how, you know, worried their family members are in Gaza uh, for their own safety. So that kind of is an undercurrent running through all of this. It's not just Canadians in there who are, who are scared. There's foreign nationals, there's Palestinians who are just living day by day or, you know, perhaps dying, not living day by day. I know you've been talking with the uh, Canadian ambassador to Egypt. Um, I guess Egypt has given all countries 72 hours to get their citizens out of the country once they're through Rafa, once they're through that crossing. So, so in terms of Canada, what's the plan here? So I did ask uh, the ambassador today about, okay, What's the plan? How's that going to work? And here's a little of, of what he said. I'm waiting you know, to receive a phone call from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that there are Canadians coming across. Then our team will be able to go and interact with these individuals and then bring them from Rafa all the way to Cairo. And they'll, they'll be provided with uh, uh, hotel rooms, uh, you know, meal services, and uh, we will process their, uh, their, their reality here in Cairo. Hmm. Very briefly, Tom, uh, the next 24 hours, what should we be watching for? Probably expecting to see some Americans uh, get out of Gaza. That's certainly the message coming from the U.S. administration. I guess we're going to have to wait and see when Canadians get out. The ambassador says that'll be a few days. We'll have to wait and see. All right, Tom Perry and team in Cairo, thank you.